This is a quick review on the nurses, ideas, and forces that define the profession. And this is from the Claywell book. This will include a couple of objectives about discussing the historical contributions to modern nursing and the role of nursing in quality improvement of patient care. Historical foundations. In the Middle Ages, most nursing care was performed by religious orders. In the Renaissance, the influence of religious orders declined and it was helped along by Protestant Reformation in Europe. Nursing continued to move more fully into the general population, and it was no longer primarily the province of religious orders. Later, nursing care became more secular and more structured, and formal training programs were begun. The Industrial Revolution, women continued to push past societal boundaries to improve nursing education and patient care. And in the early 1980s, the nature of healthcare began changing dramatically at cost reduction and quality improvement issues surfaced, and managed care emerged. Florence Nightingale was highly educated with high social standing, and she was known as the Lady with the Lamp. She established a nursing school and wrote a textbook. She changed nursing to become a respectable profession and believed nursing was an art, one that required organized, practical, and scientific training. Nightingale is responsible for major contributions to education of the nurses and began the development of the nursing process and served a large role in the development of nursing theory. She promoted research. When she learned of the lack of medical and nursing care for British troops during the Crimean War, Nightingale organized a group of 38 nurses to travel to Crimea in southern Russia. Despite societal opposition, she and her team reached the battlefields in 1854. They found overcrowding in the hospitals, no medical supplies, and limited space for the sick and injured. Using her own funds, Nightingale obtained supplies, cleaned up the unsanitary conditions, and established laundries to wash the linens. At the end of six months, Nightingale and her nurses had decreased the death rate from 42% to 2%. Dorothea Lynn Dix was a Boston school teacher who had been crusading to improve care of the mentally ill in institutions. In 1841, she volunteered to teach Sunday school classes to female convicts in the East Cambridge Jail. During her visit, she saw people with mental illnesses who had been treated inhumanely and neglectfully, and she became determined to improve their conditions. She was an activist on behalf of the indigent insane who through a vigorous program of lobbying state legislature and the United States Congress created the first generation of American mental asylums. Clara Barton. She was known as the angel of the battlefield during an American Civil War. She began teaching school at a time when most teachers were men and she was among the first women to gain employment in the federal government. Barton risked her life to bring supplies and support to soldiers in the field during the Civil War. At age 60, she founded the American Red Cross in 1881 and led it for the next 23 years. Her understanding of the needs of people in distress and the ways in which she could provide help to them guided her throughout her life. By the force of her personal example, she opened paths to the new field of volunteer services. Linda Richards was the first professionally trained American nurse. She established nursing training programs in the United States and Japan and created the first system for keeping individual medical records for hospitalized patients. Linda Richards became actively involved in nursing organizations and can be regarded as one of the movers and shakers of the young profession. She served as the first president of the American Society of Superintendents of Training Schools in 1894, which was the first professional organization for nurses. Mary Adelaide Nutting. She wrote a book with Lavinia Dock on the history of nursing. In 1907, she left John Hopkins to become professor of institutional administration at Columbia Teachers College and was the first woman to hold a professorship at Columbia University and the first university professor of nursing in the world. She established a graduate nursing education program and led Columbia's nursing education department until her retirement in 1925. Lavinia Dock. She graduated from Bellevue Training School for Nurses in 1886 and soon after became a night supervisor at Bellevue. As both student and supervisor, she became aware of the problems students face in studying drugs and solutions. And as a result, she wrote Material Medica for Nurses, and it is one of the first nursing textbooks. In addition to serving as foreign editor of the American Journal of Nursing, she wrote Hygiene and Morality, and in 1907, co-authored with Mary Adelaide Nutting, the first two volumes of a four-volume history of nursing. Volumes three and four were completed by Doc alone in 1912. During her multifaceted career, Doc worked with Lillian Wald 
at Henry Street Settlement and with Isabel Hampton Robb at John Hopkins School of Nursing. She was also secretary of the International Council of Nurses for more than 20 years. Throughout her life, she was a devoted political activist. Isabel Hampton Robb was the American Nurses Association first president. In 1896, Robb organized the group known as the Nurses Associated Alumni of the United States and Canada. The group was renamed the American Nurses Association in 1911. Earlier in 1893, Robb gathered together a nucleus of women who were superintendents of schools and founded the American Society of Superintendents of Training Schools for Nurses. This organization eventually became the National League of Nursing Education in 1912. Robb was one of the original members of the committee to found the American Journal of Nursing. While serving as superintendent of nurses at the Illinois Training School at Chicago and principal of the training schools for nurses at John Hopkins, Robb was responsible for initiating many improvements in nursing education. This included reduced working hours of the students and promoted licensure exams. Lillian Wall worked at the New York Juvenile Asylum and helped with a class about home nursing for poor immigrant families in New York's Lower East Side. Wall's work in the area prompted her to move there to be a visiting nurse and help aid the families who were living in horrible conditions. After gaining a sponsor, Wald's practice grew, as did her staff, which by 1913 had grown to 92 people. She worked in the area for 40 years, and her practice became the Henry Street Settlement and then turned into the Visiting Nurse Service of New York City. Mary Breckenridge. She turned her personal tragedies into a lifelong journey to help others. She was a widow, then divorced, and then went through the death of two children. She established the Frontier Nursing Service in 1925 to provide professional health care in the Appalachian Mountains of Eastern Kentucky, which was one of America's poorest and most isolated region. The Frontier Nursing Service lowered the maternal mortality rate in Leslie County, Kentucky from the highest in the country to well below the national average. If you are in a community college, then you're attributed being there to Mildred Montag. In her doctoral dissertation, Dr. Montag proposed educating a technical nurse for two years to assist the professional nurse who she envisioned would have a baccalaureate degree. Associate degree education for nursing began as part of the experimental project at Teachers College in Columbia University, New York, and that was in the 1950s. Dr. Montag advocated the creation of an associate degree in nursing that would have a great impact on community college education. Martha E. Rogers. Rogers' theory defined nursing as an art and science that is humanistic and humanitarian. It is directed toward the unitary human and is concerned with the nature and direction of human development. The goal of nurses is to participate in the process of change. According to Rogers, the science of unitary human beings contains two dimensions. The science of nursing, which is the knowledge specific to the field of nursing that comes with scientific research, and the art of nursing, which involves using the science of nursing creatively to help better the life of the patient. World War I nurses. Both the Army and the Navy had nurse corps. At the onset of World War I, 403 women were on active duty in the Army Nurse Corps, which was founded in 1901. By Arms to Stay on November 11, 1918, over 21,000 nurses had enlisted and over 10,000 had served overseas. They served with distinction. Three were awarded the Distinguished Service Cross, 23 received the Distinguished Service Medal, and numerous nurses received meritorious awards from Allied nations. Several were wounded and more than 200 died in service. World War II nurses. Nurses were involved in all aspects of care, in the military hospitals, on battleships, or flying on medical evacuation planes. Women during World War II were closer in the battlefields than they did in World War I or any war before. This allowed them to provide faster care to the wounded. The nurses often worked and served under harsh conditions. Their reality forced them to not only adjust to these conditions, but to also improvise and make emergency decisions on the spot. And in some instances, their proximity to war saw the Army nurses using firearms for protection. In addition to working in field hospitals, some nurses underwent additional training to become flight nurses or evacuation nurses. The Korean War Nurses when the Korean War broke out in 1950, there were just 22,000 women in uniform. The military rushed to draft, call up, and recruit needed manpower. And when these efforts came up short, the services asked American women to leave their homes and jobs and families to serve their country in its time of need, 
just as in previous wars. This time, however, they were steered into clerical and administrative positions, the so-called pink-collar jobs, except the nurses. Many of the 102,000 men that were wounded owe their survival to the brave, highly skilled nurses who risked their lives to bring emergency medicine closer to the battlefield than ever before. Whether they served in the MASH, the Mobile Army Surgical Hospital units, on the hospital ships in hostile waters surrounding Korea, or as a flight nurse on an evacuation aircraft, these women were vital to the war effort. When General MacArthur landed on Incheon, Army Nurse Corps officers also went ashore the very same day of the invasion. Vietnam War Nurses Many of the nurses served in the hospital ships of the Navy, the airlift helicopters and airplanes of the Air Force, and the hospital and field hospitals of the Army. They arrived in Vietnam with various levels of nursing experience, from newcomers to the field with barely six months of nursing under their belts, to experienced veterans of 20 plus years. Usually the more confident and experienced a nurse, the better they were able to cope with the stress and the sheer number of casualties they treated on a daily basis. So here's another NCLEX question. A nurse knows that Linda Richards is also known as the Angel of the Battlefield, the first trained nurse in America, superintendent of the female army nurses, or the lady with the lamp. Well, hopefully you know from this that it would be number two, that she was known as America's first trained nurse. The Angel of the Battlefield was Clara Barton and she was called that during the American Civil War. The superintendent of the female army nurses with Dorothea Dix, because she organized a training program for women volunteers who met strict criteria, both in moral character and looks. And then Lady of the Lamp was Nightingale because she was observed many nights making rounds through the battlefields with a lighted lantern, earning her that nickname, the Lady with the Lamp. 